G'day everyone, welcome back to another video here. In this video, we're going to be making these two little terrariums or vivariums over here for some more Raise Up Gill and I. So long story short, I needed some more space for some Gil and I because who doesn't need more in their life? And I've always got some that I'm kind of raising up in ranks and stuff. So yeah, geckos had to go, Gil and I had to stay. And it also gives me room for more future Gil and I as well. <laughs> Seeing a trend here. But yeah, basically in this video, I'm gonna show you how I put these two vivariums together behind me here, backgrounds, the full lot, and how I kind of did all the wood structures and things like that. And a nifty little trick too about how I turned those two enclosures into one enclosure should I need to. Let's get stuck in, hey? So the long and the short of it is basically, I'm getting rid of these exoterras in this couple of rows here. And what we're gonna be doing is putting in these two larger terrariums or vivariums. Uh, I do have everything pre-cut to size essentially. So a lot of this was done at the Big Green Shed, AKA Bunnings, and also at my friend's uh, little workshop, which is, uh, yeah, Simon gave me a good hand using his table saw and drop saw and stuff like that. So in theory, all I'm gonna have to do is actually just pre-drill and screw this stuff together. And hopefully it goes together pretty simple if my measurements are correct. But basically we're gonna end up with two larger vivs that are going to be here instead of all these little vivs and then basically we're going to do a bit of animal tetris guys like the tanami gill and i are going to get a cage down here also the gill and i that are behind me the little hatchies the males i've got like three males just in a tank by themselves wrestling they're going to get a bigger tank the depressor will go up into one of the old gill and i tanks a little little female or hopefully female depressor the tristus that were in here after the Oridura in here they're now up in this tank, so I've kind of set up the old Williams Eye tank for them, so they're up there. Happy days, and then I've just got to find a place for Oakley to go. So, anyway, long and the short of it is all this is gone. There'll be two bigger tanks here as kind of like essentially grow out or holding tanks for in particular Gil and I, because obviously that's my bread and butter, that's my focus, that's my love. So, without rambling on any further, I'm going to go and take all these panels next door and we're going to get screwing. So I'm making these enclosures out of form ply. I find form ply very, very durable and just long lasting. It is quite heavy and it can be a bit cumbersome to be lifting and moving these enclosures around, but they are a type of enclosure that will last pretty long term as far as a timber version of an enclosure goes. Well, there we have the shells essentially for these two enclosures. Really nothing fancy, really easy to put together now that it was all cut. So that was just a case of whipping around and pre-drilling and drilling. There is one thing that I want to do to these enclosures though that's a little bit different, I suppose. Because these enclosures are going to be sitting side by side for goodness knows how long, I essentially want to be able to have the option to turn this into one large enclosure should I decide to potentially move animals on, potentially want to just like open up some space, etc. So my plan basically is to take a hole saw, small hole saw, because I'm never planning to have like huge lizards in these. I think it's a 50 mil hole saw or thereabouts. Uh, and basically open up a little tunnel just through the bottom here where I can essentially block it off should I want to not have any animals going through it, but also be able to open it up should I want to be able to have animals going side by side. So, you know, if I decide to do a colony of Gil and I or something like that in both enclosures and kind of have it open so they can choose where they're gonna go, what they're gonna do, and then I can split it if I need to, then I'm just about giving it that option. So that's something that I'm gonna do. And that'll probably be the next step. I stacked the enclosures side by side on top of each other. And I used a screw just to kind of pin the two enclosures together. And then from there, I used the whole saw to kind of go through both sides and just make this little tunnel. Thank you. 
After that, it was time to actually put some mesh on top of the enclosures. I used a combination in the end of this 6x6 mil mesh. So I used this mesh in conjunction with some aluminium fly screen as well. The fly screen will just ensure that any insects that I put inside of the vivs won't actually get outside of the vivs. Having the aluminium fly screen just means that they're not going to be able to chew through it. And just having that mesh on top, that actual kind of solid 6x6 mil gown mesh, that's just really kind of just making sure that my lizards are secure and will stay inside of their enclosures. I placed the heavy duty mesh on top of the fly screen and made sure that I lined it up in place. From there, I just used a whole heap of button screws to fasten it nice and secure to the top of the vivarium. In my circumstance, I'm never going to see the top of this mesh, so it doesn't really matter if it doesn't look too pretty. It just needs to be functional. From there I end up using a razor blade just to kind of trim the aluminium fly screen mesh from around the edges. I painted the exposed edges of the form ply with some acrylic paint just to help it blend in a little better. I then proceeded to roll out a couple of different images that I'd taken from some gill and I habitat on a trip. After I was happy with which one I wanted in which box, I then took to them with a ruler and a razor blade and cut panels to size. This is certainly one of those times where measure twice and cut once comes into play. The last thing you want to do is stuff one of these up and cut them the wrong size. Trust me, I am speaking from experience doing that. I like to use this old piece of malamine as a cutting table of sorts. It does just give me a bit of a flat surface that I can work on. Working from the first corner, it's good to be able to just line up these panels and take your time with them, peel up the backgrounds as needed and actually re-belay them back into the position. Sometimes they can be a little bit fiddly depending on the size of the box and the access to the box, but if you just take your time with them and be patient, you can get them in there quite nicely. If I haven't already mentioned it, the dimensions on these enclosures are 700mm wide, 850mm tall and 500mm deep. As far as laying in the background, all I'm using is an actual credit card, so there's no actual water or soapy water or anything like that needed to actually lay these backgrounds in. Some people do think that it can help. I don't believe so myself. I like putting them in dry. These backgrounds are made with a bubble release vinyl, so there's no need to actually use any liquids on them. You can see here that I'm unpeeling it and re-sticking it and just kind of making sure that everything's lining up perfectly. It does take a bit of time to get this done, especially with some of the taller backgrounds. It can be a little bit more fiddly than some low ones, like some 300 to 600 mil tools. I really didn't find this to be too dissimilar, to be quite honest though. But that could also come down to the fact that I've now laid in a fair few of these things. The next step for me was to get some glass tracks ready. I cut some glass tracks to size, 
These allow for a five mil sheet of glass to get into place. But I also sanded them quite thoroughly with some rough sandpaper as I was actually gonna paint them with a gloss spray paint to make sure that I could have them a gloss black rather than a white track. You may be able to find glass tracks that are actually black in your area. I really struggle to, or you know, struggle to find some that are half decent price wise. So this is just a way that I kind of, you know, make the most bang for my buck and can get some black glass tracks. Pretty luckily I had this cracked bells tub that I was gonna use as a bit of a paint station. I had a few hollow logs lying around, but they needed a little bit of extra room inside of the middle of them. So I took to them with a six mil steel rod and basically just poked out a bunch of debris out of the guts of them. This is just gonna allow for better access for my gill and I to be running up and down inside of these logs. After I had done this, I then cut them to size to make sure they were gonna fit inside of the actual boxes. From here, what we were gonna do is use liquid nails and some of the scrap form ply that I had lying around from this build. So basically I was using the pieces of form ply as a little platform to be able to then glue these logs to, to make them standing upright. So then the gill and I can thermoregulate top to bottom and side to side. Each tank will have multiple uprights and I will get some more down the line as well to help pack out the enclosures a bit further. The beauty of having these fixed to removable platforms is I can always change things up down the line. That or I can even swap out hollows into different tanks, you know, arrange different smells for different animals, create some more enrichment, some different sort of, you know, just change it all up basically. The more we can do this inside of our captive environments, the better as well. It's all acting as further stimulation for our lizards. After I had these kind of leaning all over the shop and drying in place, I decided it was a good time to lay the glass tracks into place as well while I had the liquid nails out. For the pieces of track that were going to hang from the top, I decided to use some duct tape to basically hold the pieces of track into place. What I did do though, is I made sure that the duct tape wasn't very tacky in the center where it was actually going to wrap around the newly painted tracks. Once everything was all dry and we were ready to put the enclosures together, I decided that I was gonna wire through the heat lamp holders. They're just an E27, I think these are both Reptile 1 E27 fit lamp holders, nothing special. But I basically unwired them, poked them through the top of the mesh. And then whilst I was there, I also made sure to add in my Miss King fittings. Everything was really starting to shape up from here. So it was a case of sliding in the enclosures and making sure that I had the LED light and my T5 UVB above the enclosures as well. From there, it was a case of just adding in my hollow uprights. I also had to connect up my Miss King fittings and on top of that, I also used my light shields to just cover up these lights.
painting that makes you you are the artist i'll never be i'm so sorry i never after that it was time to crack out some cracker red sand and get it into these enclosures I'll just give you a quick little demonstration as to how this little like access hatch down here is going to work. Basically from the less visible enclosure I've just put a little tiny screw through both enclosures and it also goes through this little piece of PVC here as well and if I want to access it I basically just take a screwdriver or a drill, probably a screwdriver just for uh, noises sake, you know, don't want to disturb the animals and stuff. Just undo this little, little screw. And then basically I can just put a finger on either side of this little hatch, give it a little push out like here, pull out that little bit of PVC, then bang, two enclosures and now one, and vice versa if I want to pin them off or, you know, not give them access to each other, just put this back, do up the screw again, and then all of a sudden they're two enclosures again. Not sure if I'm going to use it, wanted to give myself the option, you know, it could be handy just to kind of have like a slightly bigger tank if I do decide to run less lizards and just want to give them more space or, you know, maybe introduce a couple of males for a little bit of ritual fighting. Who knows? Now we can't get to each other again. The enclosures still weren't looking quite finished yet, so I decided to add in some of the fish organic dried gum leaves that I had kicking around. These gum leaves are awesome. I absolutely love having a big bag of these just sitting around waiting for these kind of moments. A few days later, I finally had my glass arrive from the glass shop down the road. Everyone always asks me where to get glass cut. Just go and check out your local glaciers and see if they can cut you a few pieces. And just make sure you get polished edges on it because the last thing you want to do is be cutting your fingertips every time you're sliding glass or doors open. Now it's the moment we've all been waiting for. Time to get these Gil and I in these boxes. These boxes aren't perfect yet and they do look pretty sparse, so bear with me. Like all my other enclosures, I will bulk them out over time with other things. I've already got things in the works inside of my head as far as that's concerned for some little termite nest boxes or human hide boxes or something for these tanks because I'm not particularly looking to breed out of these. These are more for grow ups, but got like a little human hide or something for these lizards to chill out in. And I'd like to get some more hollows just to kind of make it a little bit more diverse and just give them a little bit more. But at the end of the day, it's a pretty dang good starting point. And these lizards are definitely going to be happier in the side of these versus the enclosures they were in. This pair of Tanami Gil and I were certainly putting on a show and it allowed me to catch a whole bunch of B-roll of them exploring their enclosure. The other three males just seemed to go and hide for a fair whack of it, so surely they'll settle in over the coming days. But that being said, these Tanami Gil and I are something different. I really like having A in a locality, but also just a little bit more of a diverse bloodline. It'll be great to kind of have things that I can kind of cross and, you know, make sure that there's some sort of strength in genetics and things down the line. It was awesome watching this little young male just squeeze into this hollow log.
Well, thanks so much for joining me on another video, guys. I really appreciate you watching this video, and if you can, take the time to drop the video a like and a comment as well. That'll help YouTube's algorithm just put me back up those ranks a little bit. And if you did want to support the channel even further, you can think about getting some merchandise from Teespring. The links are all in the description for that, as well as Patreon as well. If you did want to go that one step further and get some early access content, or if you join the chip in for the bug build tier, you can actually get some Patreon only videos as well. And if you don't want to do any of that, that's completely fine as well. But thanks for watching. Alrighty guys, until the next video, take it easy and I'll catch you then.